Welcome to St. Mary's Catholic Church in Richmond, Virginia. We are celebrating the Eucharist for Sunday, June 28th, the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Thank you for praying with us today. Later on in this Mass, as we stand at the altar for the Eucharistic prayer, you will see a glass bowl filled with pieces of folded paper. On those pieces of paper are printed all of the prayer intentions which you have submitted to our parish since the beginning of March. Your prayers are very much a part of today's celebration of the Eucharist. At the time in this Mass when we would typically take up a collection for the support of the Church and its ministries, information will appear on your screen informing you how you can continue to generously support our parish during this difficult time. We thank you for your generosity. Your gifts help us to be generous to our neighbors who are struggling at this time. And now let us stand as we begin this celebration in song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us open our hearts to the mercy of Christ. Lord Jesus, you forgive our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you send us your spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have Lord Jesus, you lead us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Jesus Christ, only begotten. 
Let us pray. O God, who, through the grace of adoption, chose us to be children of the light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now let us be seated as we listen to the word of God. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that he may come and stay with us there. Some time later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, can something be done for her? His servant, Gehazi, answered, yes. She has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, This time next year, you will be fondling your baby's son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here am I, Lord, here am I, I come to do your will. Here am I, Lord, here am I, I come to do your will. Here am I, Lord, here am I, I come to do your will.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man, because he is a righteous man, will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink, because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My very dear Sarah, the indications are very strong that we shall move in a few days. Lest I should not be able to write again, I feel impelled to write a few lines that may fall under your eye when I am dead. That is how he started his letter to his wife, Sarah. It was July 14, 1861, and a man named Sullivan Ballou, a young man from Rhode Island, was at an army encampment near Washington, D.C. The Civil War had burst across the American landscape with bloody results, and the future of the nation was very much in doubt. Sullivan Ballou did not consider himself to be a hero. He had two boys back home. He had served in the state legislature, but when the war broke out, he volunteered to leave home 
and family to serve. In July of 1861, the armies of North and South were preparing to face each other at a battle in Northern Virginia. Facing his own mortality, Sullivan Ballou wrote a letter to his wife, and in that letter, he said the following. He said, Sarah, my love for you is deathless. It seems to bind me with mighty cables that nothing but omnipotence could break. And yet, my love of country comes over me like a strong wind and bears me unresistibly on to the battlefield. I want us to listen to what Sullivan Ballou is saying to his wife Sarah in this letter. He writes eloquent words of love to his wife. He loves his wife and family. And he also writes about his love for his country. You can almost feel the tension within his heart in the words on the page. He loves his family. But in that moment, he also feels called to serve something even bigger, bigger than his own family, bigger than his own life. Sullivan Ballou concludes this amazing letter with these tender words to his wife, and I quote, Sarah, do not mourn me dead. Think I am gone and wait for thee, for we shall meet again. Sullivan Ballou died one week later at the first battle of Bull Run, and his wife received this letter four months later. I first heard the words of this letter while watching Ken Burns' History of the Civil War on PBS. It's how they conclude the first episode of that series. And when I heard these words of this letter, I'm not ashamed to say that I cried. This young man from Rhode Island was eloquently expressing something which outstanding women and men of every generation have sought to express. This young man from Rhode Island genuinely loved his family and his friends. He loved his life and his home. And he also, he also felt called to sacrifice for something bigger than himself. Even if that meant he had to let go of family and safety. Even his own life. People of great integrity have felt this way and lived this way throughout the centuries. In 1776, there were women and men in this, on this continent who were willing to sacrifice their lives, their fortunes, their sacred honor, because they believed in something bigger than themselves, a new kind of nation in the history of the world. In 1861, there were women and men in America who were willing to sacrifice everything because they believed in something bigger than themselves. As our nation began to deal convulsively with the horrible legacy of slavery, a task which is still not concluded today. In 1941, there were women and men in America who were willing to sacrifice everything and leave home and family because they believed in something bigger than themselves. They believed that the Nazi death camps had to be stopped and shut down, that Japanese expansion needed to be controlled and curtailed. On April 3rd, 1968, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stood in the pulpit of a church in Memphis, Tennessee. He was at that time leading a peaceful protest against racial injustice in that city, but many city leaders were breathing fiery threats against Dr. King and his work. So on that night, Dr. King said, and I quote, I would like to live a long life, Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but mine eyes have seen the glory 
of the coming of the Lord. Listen again to Dr. King's words. I may not get there with you. I just want to do God's will. Dr. King loved his family and his friends and the people with whom he had worked for justice. He loved them. He wished to live a long life with them in their company. But he also knew he had a divine calling, and that calling could cost him everything. Dr. King was assassinated the next day. Whether it is the soldiers who risked everything in Vietnam or the Middle East, whether it's aid workers and diplomats who volunteer for difficult assignments in far-flung parts of the world, whether it's young people who decide to become police officers or firefighters against their family's wishes, whether it's the talented young man whose family wants him to go to medical school and instead he decides to go to seminary to study for priesthood, or the talented young woman who gives up the lucrative business path that her family has set her upon, and instead she chooses to teach in the inner city. We are often inspired by women and men who feel called to serve something bigger than themselves, even if that means they have to sacrifice the nearness or support of family and friends. Well, there was a talented young man from Galilee. He'd been born in Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth. And that talented young man from Galilee also felt called to sacrifice everything so that he could serve something bigger than himself. His parents did not always understand what he was doing. Local leaders took offense at his words and his deeds. He put himself in danger. But this young rabbi from Galilee knew that his life would only make sense by serving something, actually serving someone bigger than any of us. And that young man, Jesus of Nazareth, says in today's gospel passage, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up their cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. At first, these words, as recorded in Matthew's Gospel, may sound harsh. What did Jesus say? If you love your parents or your children more than you love me, you're not worthy of me? Notice, Jesus never says, don't love your family. Jesus doesn't say, don't love your parents, don't love your children. Rather, I think he is inviting us to consider the possibility that we might fall in love with something much bigger than ourselves, much bigger than our families, bigger than our current dreams. When we fall in love that way, we find ourselves willing to sacrifice and serve to follow that dream wherever it might lead. Of course, Jesus is not referring to any single nation in these statements, nor is he referring to any political cause. He's not asking every one of us to start a military career or become a firefighter. Jesus is inviting everyone to consider the possibility that we could fall so in love with the Lord and his gospel that we're willing to spend the rest of our lives putting the gospel first, putting Jesus first, making his truth our priority. When people dedicate their lives to a specific cause, we often call them heroes. When people do that for the gospel, we often call them saints. We are a nation of generous people 
who are imperfect human beings. We're a nation that has done so much for humanity and which still has so much to do. We're a nation that strives for justice and has obvious struggles with injustice. A land of the free, where some were once enslaved. In this week leading up to Independence Day, let's join together in praying for our nation, our government, and every one of our neighbors. And in this coming week, let's ponder together our dignity as baptized believers. We belong already to something much bigger than ourselves. St. Paul tells us today that we belong to the Church of Christ, the worldwide community of believers. We are baptized into Christ, so we already belong to him. His gospel is the source of, of my truth, and it's the path for my life. Listening to the Lord, serving the Lord, sharing the good news, that's the great vocation given to every one of us. And every day, Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Loving him, loving him first and best will guide us as we love everyone else. Please stand. Inspired by the Spirit, together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the nearness of our God, we make known our prayers and petitions. For the church, may we be open to the generosity of God's love and compassion for us. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer for peace, that God will turn hearts from violence and help those in conflict to find new ways to resolve disputes. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer for all who suffer as victims of hate and violence. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer for all who are unemployed, that God will give them courage and help them find support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Give comfort and peace to all who struggle with illness of body or spirit. For all who were remembered in the prayers of our community and for those we name aloud. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died. For Neil Griffin, Stan Vickhouse, 
and John Barrett remembered in this liturgy. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For these intentions and all we hold in our hearts, and for the salvation of all God's people, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We make all these prayers in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Let us pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with angels and saints we praise and glorify you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, handed it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Oh. 
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Barry, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. We pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please stand. 
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God.